Speaking of what's next on the list, I'll try, try to get out next Sunday. Uh, this was filmed on Mother's Day, so I'm not doing anything above and beyond. I'm not helping out around here today. Uh, I gotta get up to the other shop and get back on that Ranger. Get that cardboard list started and start scratching off a few things. And got some news that we didn't want. Let me turn this around. Get you down low, maybe you can see it. Yeah, we've upgraded the wheels and tires on it. But now it's uh, dropped two cylinders. Gotta still investigate what's going on with that. Yeah, and them wheels and tires made a big difference. Those look nice, but now we've got issues. We're going to have to dig in that, figure out what's going on. May have to uh, trailer this up to the other shop to take a look at it. Not sure yet, but I'm going to take off here and get some fuel and get cutting some grass. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. All right, moving along, we got a few more things accomplished. Uh, I'll show you what we've gotten done uh, at this point in the video. Uh, it's afternoon, still haven't gotten a shower yet, so still gotta cut the grass. Got a little bit of a bed head going on here. You might think I may have something to uh, do with the logo I chose. Yeah, kinda has some resemblance, don't we? We've got the uh, upper intake bolted down. We've got the upper intake bolted down. We've got the plug wires back on. Stavator cap. We've got the front hoses plumbed. All that looks like it's looped at the moment. What's he got going on here? Yep, those are run. So he's got to run some other hoses, it looks like. He's not here at the moment. But it's starting to come together. It's like he picked up a interior screw kit. We got the dash uh, bolted back in. Still got to put the new dash pad on it. I'm sure that'll make a world of difference. If you've uh, watched the street rod vid, you'll see uh, us going down the highway in this. and The film kind of picks up the ratty looking dash top. But uh, we're going to rectify that. That's next on the list. Alright, moving on to the outdoor barbecuing segment of our little show here uh, got the grill set up gonna start it up here it's kind of a janky mess but we make it work anyways these are a whole lot cheaper in the baking aisle don't fall victim now don't do something silly you gotta save money for the horsepowers do is actually sink it down in there well, I got this on that barbecue guy that's on the TV they don't paper towel on your tongs there's an old olive oil Right on there, or if it gets all over the place, that's fine. No problems. 
do that so your burgers and your chicken and your steaks don't stick. Plus that'll help the flare-ups, which we actually want in this case. Now for the fun part. Okay, some liquid encouragement here. Thanks, on. There's no clicker. No, I'm grabbing that. This is my clicker. Just stick that down in there and have at it. She's on. I'll just let that warm up. There we go. We got the smoker box going. And I just threw on some Terry Bradshaw's. Yep, Terry Bradshaw sells hamburgers. They look a lot like the wall burgers. We'll try them out. Yeah, I'd say the smoker's working pretty good. It smells pretty good. Let's see what them Bradshaw's look like. Not too bad. I think these are the cheddar bacon flavor. You know, if you scratch your screen, you might be able to smell this. Yeah, well, use your imagination. It's almost dinner time, guys. Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Woodchuck's Garage. We got the fox spider out of the garage for the moment. The kid's out enjoying it right now. We'll get back to that here in another vid. For right now, look what's back. Project Ranger is back in the shop. And we've got a list to go through. Grab that. Boy, we got a lot to do here. I replaced the brake lines from the master cylinder to the proportion valve. Got to get these blake, bleh, brakes bled. Maybe. Got to install a fuel cell. I'll show you that in just a second. Got to get AN fittings. I need to go from AN to a hose barb. So I'm just going to run a rubber hose line on this. Don't need anything fancy here. It's just a trail rig. Uh, I got to bolt down the roll bar. Got that sitting in there. Uh, I'm going to eliminate this hood latch because it's a pain in the butt. And I'm going to order some hood pins. I think I found them as cheap as eight bucks on eBay. So we'll get some hood pins coming for it. That'll be the sole method of holding it down. Well, what's next? Uh, number eight. Still got to change oil on this. I have not changed it since acquiring it. It really hadn't been nowhere. It only runs for a couple minutes at a time, so I'm not too concerned. So I gotta get an oil filter and I guess a trans auxiliary filter, which this does have. I need to reroute the electric fuel pump and lines because it's sitting there. I no longer want it there. I want to get it down under the truck and on the frame rail somewhere. Somewhere it won't get hooked on like a tree limb or a rock, something like that, just so it's out of the way and out of the engine compartment. Which I don't think that was a bright idea to put it there. And we're gonna put new lines in. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, right now when you turn the key on, the fuel pump comes on. I don't really care for that. I think I'm gonna put that on a toggle and a relay. The electric fan that we replaced in earlier vids uh, has not turned on yet. You know, I just cut the wires from the old one and mashed them to the other. It don't come on. Uh, we got to figure that one out. i probably just put that on a toggle and a relay. Um, if you watched my painting video on this, where I did the 2995 uh, Rust-Oleum paint job on this, uh, the clear coat, existing clear coat on the fenders and part of the cab peeled right up when I pulled my uh, masking tape up. Awesome. Uh, so I got pinstripe already for that. Silver. 
Uh, gotta build new interior door panels because the ones on the truck are warped really bad. In fact, I picked up some board today, but I really should have got two. So I realized I'm not gonna have enough material to do both. Uh, what else? Uh, I gotta patch up the heater box on the firewall. Again, earlier vids, you probably seen me working back in there. Can't see it probably from this view. There's a hole in it. We'll fix that somehow. Uh, still gotta get a windshield put in. I know I've been waiting to do that, and I bet you anything, bet you anything, it's gonna cost me an extra 50 bucks now. And I still gotta figure out what's going on here. The transfer case seems to be stuck in low. Yeah. Yet it's in two wheel drive. Well, that's probably because the front hubs are unlocked. Even weirder yet, normally it spins both rear tires, but when we went to put this on a trailer on wet grass, it only spun the right rear. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. So, uh, there's the list. Let's uh, have you take a look at this fancy fuel cell I got. Now, we talked about maybe putting it here in the back, but uh, I don't think I want it back there. I'd rather have it, I guess, up here. Uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of a pain to put fuel in it, but if somebody wants to later, they can put a, get my arm around, a neck from here back to here, maybe, because this isn't going to do anything anymore. And so these door cards are really warped out. They're in bad shape. But uh, seats are in. Got the seat belt bolted down. I'm sort of glad that uh, project's done and over with. Got the weather strip put in. I just threw down some floor mats on there. But she's solid now. It's all that uh, sheet steel, not sheet metal. And you can see my brake pedal there. Probably talked about that in another vid. I still got to figure out why when I push this down, it stays. Well, I'm starting to actually get pedal now. That's weird. Maybe I do have brakes. Wouldn't that be a neat? Maybe the... Uh, Elves hopped in here overnight and actually fixed something for me. Oh yeah, see that over there? I believe that's rolled diamond plate. Yep, I think I'm going to do that. Let's go over and see what I'm up to over there. Yeah, see this? Right there. Getting close. It just ripped the clear coat right up. So I'm just going to cover that back up with some pinstripe. See the new master cylinders put in now. So I almost trip over an air hose. There's my board. I need to get another one, I guess. Like I said, I'm going to take this here and apply it to this and make new door panels. We'll see how that turns out. In any case, I got her jacked up. I'm getting ready to pull these front wheels and tires off. And uh, start taking a look at these brakes. Unless I have them now, mysteriously. Well, back I picked up one of these uh, Earthquake XT Stubbies from Harbor Place, I'll tell you what, it's got some pretty good torque to it, and it's really lightweight. <coughs> See if we can get these off with the compressor kicks on. <coughs> it's really a shame on this truck, is these are 35s. Tons of tread left, but it's all dry riding here from sitting. <coughs> no, again, I wouldn't recommend 
run down the highway with it, but it'd be just fine for the trails. <laughs> Can't wait to see how it does off road. I'll be right back. So, how do you like that? First time you saw that, eh? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out this mystery we talked about in earlier videos. Just what the heck this chassis is and everything else. Yeah, she's spinning all right. So I know she's a two-wheel drive. Front pinion sounds good. What's behind here? Probably should spray them bleeders down. See what we got. So we got some Rancho RS 5000s in it. Of course, they need to be replaced, but I'm going to run them for now. Probably even sell it as is. I don't know. Well, let's uh, go get the other wheel off and see what we got over there. Walk by. Bear with me with the uh, camera. I am the cameraman. I am the uh, official tire changer here. Turn the compressor off. Turn that back on. A little more power. <laughs> well, it's nice to be able to get back to work on this. It's been a few months since I've been able to touch it. I said it's been a while. I like them cobwebs on there. That line looks pretty fresh there. Feel a little bit of drag on it. But, uh, needs to be played with, needs to be driven. Anyways, here's the, uh, there's that drop sump, I guess you call it. Not really a sump. But it's got the uh, sponge in it, the anti slosh foam. Comes with a mounting tab, so you don't need to buy straps. So yeah, I think that's a pretty darn good deal. Hopefully it don't leak. You know these old trucks use the old chrome or stainless trim. Let's see if we can clean that up a bit. Yeah, 
some of it off. I don't think it's going to get super clean. I'm not going to spend time doing that. But that should be the side piece here. It's in multiple pieces. This one's a little mangled. Like I said, I went to get this. It's hard to see in the pictures. I think a big old limb broke out of a tree while this was parked. Went right through the windshield and uh, damaged the A-pillar. I managed to push it out quite a bit with a port of power. Still don't know how this is going to go. There's a pretty good bow to it. Figure out what piece is which. And try and match it up in shape to the other. So I think this is the other side. See, it's got a big old dent in it too. But they clip in here on the back side. There's clips up there in the window channel. Kind of see how kitty wampus that is. That's <laughs> I'm trying to match up here at the bottom, and this is way off. I think I'll have the windshield guy do is try and clip it in the best he can. And then uh, with that windshield here thing they got these days to the, the old butyl tape, you just glue the trim down. We'll just put some tape on there. Hopefully, the tape doesn't pull the Cheap rust oleum off what I did. So we'll call it a day on that, I guess, for now. Let's uh, head back to the bed, truck bed, that is. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, yes, side cutters. All right, we'll set on back over here. Put you in pause for a minute because I'm the cameraman here. Anyways, yeah, you can see the bar there. I still haven't put the lights on her. If I did, I won't be able to get it in or out of the garage. Yeah, let me step up here and not hit my head in, hopefully. <laughs> I just have this temporarily zip tied in. It's literally just sitting there. I'm going to pull it up and try to turn the valve off that's under it. I'll probably have to stack some wash or something here. Get this bolted down. I've got uh, a couple of scrap pieces. You know, I like to use my scraps to set the front on. So hopefully this bar will sit level. Once it's on her, let's go ahead and get this uh, temporary tank out. Try to set this down. I'm going to tip it over. There you go. If I wiggle you, I'm sorry. shut off there. Uh, I do have a clamp on there the thing I'm going to do is just cut the hose right there we'll just get this out in a hurry I I can do it with this I ain't worried too much about the hose I think it's gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Alright. Grab a knife and we'll cut that out. 
no big deal. One second. Just gonna cut it. Still a little bit of fuel, but that'll evaporate. So we'll move this back. Just gonna use my foot here to shove that back. That is looks like something we use for bleeding brakes, I guess. Let's uh, get the tank and set it in place and see what we got. Oh, yeah. All right, we're just gonna lay this down for a minute because we're gonna have to cut a relief in the floor. For this to go down under the floor. And of course, if I can find center here, it's probably not going to line up with anything. It's going to be on the edges of that. So, I don't know. Put it a little bit. I don't think that's centered. Got the wrong things, I guess. There we go. Should be able to do something like that, I guess. So, I'm going to have to get some cardboard out and figure out where that's going to be. I'll get my marker to mark the floor. And we'll just cut a little rectangle out to let that tank sit down flat. And we'll figure out a way to bowl it down. And hopefully that float and sending unit will work. Because this truck's not using factory gauges. It's using an aftermarket. So let's get this figured out. Alright, got our centered. I got my marks made out. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'm not sure if I'm just going to cut it out complete or just bend it down. I think I'll just cut it out complete. Hopefully I'm behind the cross member. I'll go ahead and film this, but I'm going to turn the volume down. and Hopefully the volume doesn't pick up on your end. Otherwise, headphone alert. Alright, compressor's catching up. So this ain't the big one at the other garage, it's a lot smaller.
top of a cross member. I'm trying to feel for the spots. Start prying on it, see what we get. cross member under there we'll have to work around okay that'll be that we're gonna have to uh notch that cross member Let's hope we wouldn't have to deal with that It's welded on both sides. I'll probably just take the centerpiece right on out. Well, this ain't going to do it. We're going to have to get the saws off. Let's grab that. I have it. Back in a minute. Yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. I gotta, I'm going to cut that right out. I ain't worried about it. Well, guess what I didn't have? Saws all. Yep, not here. So I ended up using the cutoff wheel with the whole process. And there you go. Big old hole in the floor. Let's see what this looks like. I think we can still get fittings on there. I don't know if I need to take off a little more or not. I got it back about where it needs to be. I think that's going to work out just fine. I'm only using one side of this. It's not a return system, so I'm only going off one side. So I might even be able to do a 90 if I want, or just run a 45 and just curl it that way that should work and whatever <laughs> integrity I took away by cutting that cross member will get back by bolting her down four corners but looking good we'll have her here in a minute <laughs> 